This is a brand new Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X with a brand new Snapdragon Elite X processor. Competing directly against the likes of Intel, AMD, and Apple's own chips, this laptop is super sleek, lightweight, and has so many features packed into its slim design. The Snapdragon is a completely new chip with 12 physical cores with a 4 nanometer die. This means you get extremely fast performance with very low battery usage. This also means that there is now a Windows alternative to Apple's MacBook lineup that's been dominating with their own ARM processors. Okay, so before we get into looking at this beautiful new laptop by Lenovo, I just want to talk about what the Snapdragon Elite X is. Now, I mentioned it's a new 12-core processor, but what's very interesting is that it is a combined processing unit. There's a CPU, GPU, and now what's called an NPU, all built into one chip. So you're probably asking yourself, what is an NPU? Essentially, it's a neural processing unit, and it's made specifically for AI. All right, now that we got the Snapdragon stuff out of the way, I want to talk about this laptop, and I want to start talking about the display first. You get a 14.5-inch OLED panel that can go up to 1,000 nits, so that means extremely bright display in pretty much any setting. Whether you're worried about glare or working in direct sunlight, you will not have that issue with this laptop. Interestingly enough, you get a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So if you're used to 16 by 9, which is pretty much the norm widescreen, the aspect ratio is going to be slightly different. So if you are used to watching certain movies, depending on how it's filmed, it will look a little different on this laptop, but it's not so much uh, drastic than 16 by 9. It's a very small change in ratio. Another very interesting and honestly, a, a positive point for this display is that not only is it touchscreen, but it's 90 hertz. Now, I was a little surprised that it wasn't 120 hertz, but any display more than 60 hertz is a win in my book. Now, in terms of specifications, this unit comes with 16 gigabytes of LDDR5 memory, one terabyte of storage, which is expandable if you were to take the back cover of the laptop out. It also comes equipped with Wi-Fi 7. Now, Wi-Fi 7 is very, very cool because it's essentially its own band and its own frequency. So we're used to 2.4 and 5 gigahertz for our internet speeds for the longest time. Both of these bands and frequencies can get interrupted with different signals uh, or different devices using the same signal. With Wi-Fi 7, which is so new, even Wi-Fi 6E, it's a new band and there's going to be less interference. So I personally use a Deco Mesh Wi-Fi system that uses 6E Wi-Fi. I can use that 6E direct backhaul from my main router from my mesh directly to this laptop and I get extremely good speeds. Network stuff and a lot of connectivity stuff is often overlooked by the processor and memory but I have to say that if you are interested in getting the maximum speed out of your home network having Wi-Fi 7 or even Wi-Fi 6 in a laptop is a huge boost and it's something you should look for when purchasing a laptop in the future. Now on top of that it comes with a four array microphone system meaning the mic on this is quite accurate and it will pick different sound variations from different angles and it also comes with Dolby speakers. So the speakers are actually surprisingly well. Um, it doesn't sound tinny and I would say it's pretty much up par with the MacBook lineup with um, the accuracy of the bass and the treble. And it does come with a 1080p webcam, which is better than the standard 720p webcam that Apple's been offering for the longest time. They just recently upgraded, but I'm glad that the 1080p webcam is found on this device. Now it's kind of cool because using the co-pilot and AI features, you can actually change how you look and how it perceives like eye tracking, as well as just a cartoonish filter for your face, all that built into the Snapdragon processor, but also integrated with a good hardware and a good webcam. Now in terms of ports, it comes with three USB-C ports. Now USB-4 technically isn't going to be tested and I believe licensed until July of 2024, but these are 40 gigabytes per second ports. So these also work for charging as well as high speed data transfer. And there's three of them. The one thing that I did not like is that there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. A lot of the MacBooks actually still come with this and a lot of other Windows machines come with a headphone jack. I was a little disappointed, but for audio files out there, you can easily get a USB-C to a 3.5 dongle and it's not that big of an issue. And if you want to connect your devices wirelessly, this does come with Bluetooth 5.3. So AirPods, uh, any new speakers, your keyboard and laptop, everything will be compatible with this device. And on top of all that, you get two displays on addition to the screen on the laptop if you want to use multiple monitors, all at 4K 60 Hertz, 
which is much better than what the MacBook M3 Air currently does, where it only allows you to connect one external monitor or two monitors if you have your laptop in clamshell mode. So that's a big plus for the Lenovo. Now for the keyboard, I want to say this is probably one of the best keyboards I've used. I've always been a huge proponent of the Mac keyboards, but the keyboards on this laptop are actually very well spaced. They have a good travel. And to be quite honest, I usually takes me a bit of time getting used to a MacBook keyboard than going to a Windows machine. I was able to use this almost immediately. And the very cool thing is there actually is a dedicated co-pilot function. And we'll talk about what co-pilot is in a minute, but the dedicated buttons on this keyboard layout is actually quite great where you don't have to use shortcuts in order to access specific features. You have direct keys for that. The trackpad on the other hand is good, but it's not great. Uh, in terms of gestures and stuff like that, I still feel Apple is ahead of the curve. Uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers try and mimic what Apple does. This is good. I like the clickiness, but it just doesn't have that same feel and the premium feel of like the glass trackpad on a MacBook, but still very, very good trackpad. Obviously just not as good as the Apple's. Other than that, I gotta say that this is a solid nine out of 10 in terms of just working on the machine and just the key travel and the ergonomics. Now I do wanna spend a minute talking about the build quality. Typically when you open up any laptop, uh, you get some resistance from the hinges. The hinge system on this Lenovo is actually very, very good. Meaning if you were to open this specifically using the top lid, your laptop actually isn't gonna move. So it's almost, I would say on par with the Apple lineup. A lot of laptops, the hinges are a little sturdy. You gotta use both hands. This is actually quite good. In terms of the actual material, I believe that this is a hard plastic with some aluminum base. It's very, very compact and a very, very solid device. It doesn't have any flex to it. I don't feel like I gotta be super gentle while moving this around. I obviously always recommend that you use a computer case or a laptop case when moving your laptop around, but I don't feel like I have to baby this uh, like certain other laptops, certain other laptops that are made specifically with plastic. Mainly my biggest concern comes from the top shell where if you press too hard, you don't wanna interfere or damage the display. With the Lenovo, I don't feel like I have that problem. So I wanna say the build quality on this is very, very good. Now I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about benchmarks. Um, I haven't gotten the chance to do my own direct comparison. I've only had this laptop for two days, but the early indicators online with the Geekbench scoring is that this Snapdragon Elite X processor is actually very good. It's almost on par with the M3 in terms of single core. I believe it's only a couple hundred points slower than the M3, but it's very, very fast when it comes to multi-core performance. And it does help that it has 12 physical cores where the M3 and a lot of the Intel uh, cores or CPUs only have 10 cores. So those extra two cores do come in handy. You get 42 megabytes of cache. You get 3.8 gigahertz of uh, clock speed up to 4.4 or 4.3 gigahertz, depending on the model of a uh, multi-core speed. So not only do you have multiple cores, but these are very fast acting and very fast uh, cores in general. So I gotta say that I'm surprised by the Geekbench scores. I'm surprised it's that much better than the multi-core performance of a lot of the high-end CPUs, but I'll be doing my own performance evaluations. I'll do some timing tests based on like uh, how long it takes to render and export a 4K video, compiling if you're a computer programmer or just general data to use, how many tabs on Chrome you can have open before this thing starts to pooch out. So I will be doing a full video review, so stay tuned for that. But the early indicators based on the Geekbench scores is that this laptop is extremely powerful. In terms of gaming, I didn't buy this laptop for gaming and I didn't expect this to be good at gaming off the bat. Remember, this is an ARM processor. Most games are developed in x86. So a lot of applications right now are actually x86. So when the Snapdragon actually loads these up, if they're not native to ARM, they have to go through an emulator and that usually means that there is some sort of performance hit. It's never one-to-one. -one. So you may get a 10% or maybe a 5% performance hit. The algorithm and emulation is quite good these days. That being said, I don't expect games to be great on this machine. I will be doing some tests. There are some early indications that some games like Grand Theft Auto V, even Cyberpunk can run at like 30 to 60 FPS based on the resolution and how well you play. So they are playable, but this is not a dedicated gaming laptop. I already have a Steam Deck, I have a gaming PC, so that wasn't my intent. But if in the future that 
developers start taking advantage and start modeling their games for ARM-based uh, processors, then we might see some pretty good performance on this. But I just want to get that out there that this laptop is not intended to be a gaming device, but it has the potential to be in the long run. All right, so I mentioned this feature called Copilot. So what is Copilot? Microsoft has branded all these new laptops is coming up as Copilot PCs. Copilot essentially is a branded term for Microsoft's own AI service. So if you're familiar with ChatGPT and a lot of other prompts, this has that built into the computer, hence why they use the NPU, the neural processing unit. So a lot of that is done locally on the machine and not through a server or through the cloud service. So Copilot, number of cool features. The biggest one was supposed to be recall. Everyone knows about recall, for, but those who are not aware, Windows recall was essentially Windows takes a snapshot of your laptop at multiple times, like almost every second. And if you need to go back to any specific time, it will literally rewind the time machine and go back to whatever you were doing at the time. So if you had a specific program open at the time and you were at a specific time in that program, it'd come right back. Obviously there are security concerns with this because Microsoft is actively taking screenshots of you know content sensitive or privacy private related matter and then storing it on either locally on the machine or through the cloud. So that feature isn't available quite yet, but I can see some iteration once it goes through the legal loopholes that it will be available. Other things, you get the standard prompts where you can ask AI a simple question and it'll spit out an answer, but it also asks for prompts or you can use it to ask prompts for drawing or you can use the touch screen to draw a specific image and then the AI portion of the computer will either modify it or refine it. So lots of cool features. AI is gonna be here to stay, it's not going away. And I kind of like that a lot of hardware is integrated into the AI system. It's kind of scary too, that's a separate video all in itself, but I do like where this is going in terms of just general productivity. Where you stand on AI, that's a separate debate altogether. But I like the fact that Microsoft was the first to jump on this. And I suspect that Apple with their recent uh, keynote and a lot of their stuff that's coming out with the iPad, they're gonna be integrating their own open AI system with their products as well. So that's the general trend where we're going with, but the co-pilot stuff seems really fun and really cool with the Lenovo. Now, in terms of battery life, the battery has been pretty good. Like, I mean, very good. 70 watt hour battery, you get a fast charger block with you can charge up a laptop, I think in under an hour and a half, I think even an hour or so, very, very good. So far, I've been using this computer sporadically. Like I said, I've only had it for two days, but I've only had to charge it once. That's when I unboxed it. And I've probably used the computer total about like 12 hours and I still have battery left. So very, very strong battery performance. So if that was a concern, a lot of the new machines that are be coming out with this Snapdragon processor, it's gonna have great battery life. So Apple's advantage and a lot of the advantages that Intel had with some of their laptops, I think these Snapdragon Qualcomm laptops are really gonna take the cake when it comes to multi-day performance on a single charge. Now, in terms of pricing, I paid $1,700 Canadian for this machine. And for performance and comparison's sake, a MacBook Air 15 inch spec'd out with 16 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte of storage is actually $2,500. So there's an $800 difference. Now there are certain things you can't quantify. One is on the Apple's ecosystem. The other is on a Windows ecosystem. However, looking at the screen, you got a better screen with the OLED on the Lenovo where you only get an LED uh, backlit display on the MacBook Air. Also only 60 Hertz. So you don't even get the high refresh rate. And the MacBook Air M3 is a 10 core processor where the Snapdragon is a 12 core. So there are some physical advantages of having this laptop. Also, the Lenovo, you can pop out the back cover and expand the storage where on the MacBook Air or any MacBook device in that matter, once you get it spec'd out and you purchase it, you cannot upgrade because everything is integrated onto the circuit board. So if you are looking for a laptop, ARM-based laptop, you want something that'll last you a lot of time, like prolonged period of time of two days, you want to be able to use all the new software, um, you're a computer programmer or you're a video editor, you like photography, et cetera, et cetera, demanding applications. You don't have to go with Apple now. You can now go with an efficient Windows machine. Never thought I'd say that, an efficient Windows machine and this Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X. So that's something to consider. The good news here is with that discrepancy, Apple's gonna have to look at their marketing and 
they're going to have to adjust what their entry level laptops come out with now that there's a new competitor on the block. So I've always been a big proponent of Apple, but I've always been a harsh critic on their pricing because pricing is horrible compared to the Windows side. And hopefully this competition will bring that pricing down. Now I'm going to have a full video review on the Lenovo 7X in a couple of weeks when I use it more and put it through the rigor. So stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you guys love this video, subscribe to my channel. I post weekly videos on tech and gaming. So if you're into that sort of stuff, this is the right channel to do that. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. I'll see you guys later in the next one. Peace.